Oh my goodness. <laughs> Want to beat the crowds in Japan? Here are some unique and easy things to do and see in Sendai with potentially less tourists, including some really interesting foods too. Starting with a free observation deck. Come to Sendai! <laughs> Welcome to Sendai, about 350 kilometers away from Tokyo. Possibly a great day trip, but also a great place to stay if you want to check out nearby locations. I always tell my viewers to head up to a viewing spot so that you can see exactly how big the city is. Okay, it's a little bit tricky to get here. The AER um, building has two entrances. One is sort of like a shopping complex. The one next to it has a big open lobby, which will lead you to two sets of um, elevators or lifts in the, in the UK. One of them will take you to the 31st floor. The other side will take you to the 30th floor. Make sure that you hit the 31st floor or else you'll end up on the wrong floor. It's easy to find shrines and temples without crowds outside of the popular destinations, but if you escape Tokyo or some of the other tourist-centric cities, you will reap the rewards. Around a 10-minute walk from Sendai Station, you find Koshoji Temple with its beautiful pagoda behind me. It's a temple where there's literally no one, and this is one of the things that I love the most about traveling outside of the major cities of Tokyo, Osaka and Kyoto. Koshoji Temple has a beautiful pagoda. It's got some really nice grounds with a line of Tori gates <laughs> heading to a shrine. And I think it's worth a good 15, 20 minutes stroll if you want to have some peace and quiet away from the crowds. Nestled around all of the taller buildings, this place is kind of unique. And one of the things that I've definitely been surprised by here in Sendai is the amount of small shrines and temples that you'll find dotted around the city as you explore. So, explore the city, why not? The most convenient way for tourists to travel around the vibrant city of Sendai is by using the Loop Bus Network. Sendai also has some JR train lines and two subway lines too. I was feeling hungry, so I got the subway to my next destination. So let's explore two popular but uniquely Sendai foods. Okay guys, I've come to Gengo Chaya, uh, I guess a popular dessert sweet store restaurant in Sendai. And one of the things that I 100% recommend that you do when you come to a city or an area is explore its cuisine. And I'm here at a dessert store and I'm going to be trying a very interesting dessert called omochi. And I'm actually going to go for the Zunda green soybean jam omochi. And it says here that it's a famous glutinous rice dessert is sticky and maybe hard to swallow for some people <laughs> and I have it here in front of me I've got my Japanese tea and the omochi which looks very interesting so itadakimasu let's give it a go mm. it's chewy for those of you who um, are not really into super sweet things, this is quite delicate. It's not too sweet, but it definitely doesn't taste like beans, if that makes any sense. When visiting Sendai, you really need to try gyutan, which is a Japanese food that is made from grilled beef tongue. And my tip is to ask a local, which is exactly what I did, which led me to this very local and cheap eats destination. Ajitasuke is tucked in the middle of the city next to a garage and it is a well-known local gyutan spot. Gyutan is beef tongue and it might not sound that appetizing but when it's marinated properly and it's cooked the right way it's actually quite delicious. I actually asked a local where their favorite spot was and they told me this place behind me was their favorite spot. 
I've just had a lunch set meal for 1,400 yen that included a soup, it included the beef tongue, and it also included the rice. Oh my goodness, <laughs> this guy is big. Oh, this girl is big. I think it's a girl. Uh, towering over Sendai like Godzilla, basically <laughs> spying on your every move. It knows what you're doing. Not to be missed is the Sendai Daikanon. As you can see behind me, it's the world's fifth largest statue. At one point, it was the first. And it absolutely towers over Sendai like Godzilla. As you walk around the area, take your time to really admire all the different vistas of this statue peeking at you as if it was watching over you from the skies above. One of the tallest statues in the world, the Sendai Daikanon, is a symbol of hope and healing and is also meant to protect the people of Japan from disasters and bring peace to the world. To be honest, I'm more impressed at what I thought I was going to be. <laughs> There's people just stopping and taking photos of this object in the background. It appears larger in certain um, locations, so you might want to do a little bit of walking around maybe doing some Instagram um, research to see where the best spots are for photos and video, etc. Um, overall, it's pretty cool. I wasn't able to enter, so there's something that you do need to know, and that is that the opening hours, the, the hours uh, when it's open is actually quite short. It closes like at 3 p.m. You might want to double check, but I didn't get there on time, but it doesn't matter. I've had loads of fun walking around, chilling, and just enjoying the magnitude of this Thing in the background that's taking over this place. Um, just a few additional things I wanted to mention. It should, in theory, take around 30 to 40 minutes from the station on the bus. Definitely do your research. It might take a little bit longer to get here than what you might anticipate. That's the only thing that I'm going to say. But it's worth it, I think, anyway. I've only scratched the surface of what Sendai has to offer but I wanted to mention some notable things to see, which due to their popularity might not necessarily be an escape from the crowds. If you happen to visit Japan in the summer, then the Tanabata Matsuri in Sendai is worth the crowds. Sendai's Tanabata Matsuri runs from the 6th to the 8th of August every year. And as you can see, these arcades and streets are lined with these sort of streamers that are made out of paper and bamboo and are crafted over many, many months to show how creative and amazing this place is. And as a Pokemon fan, I wanted to highlight the Tohoku Pokemon Center, which, although also crowded, can be less crowded than the ones in Tokyo. If you're a Pokemon fan, then you might want to check out Sendai's Pokemon Center, the Pokemon Center Tohoku, the only one in this region, and it's pretty packed today, but it might actually be less busy than the ones elsewhere. Sendai is also a fantastic place to base yourself to explore trips surrounding the city, like Matsushima Bay, which is one of Japan's top three iconic scenic viewing spots, and Yamadera Temple, a temple resting at the top of a mountain that really is quite an amazing day trip away. In a future guide, I will be exploring these less crowded locations too. But in the meantime, consider checking out my Less Crowded Japan playlist to get even more ideas of things to see and do that are accessible, tourist friendly, and that I personally recommend. It's thanks to your support that I can return to Japan as a tourist and create even more hidden gems videos that are accessible and off the beaten path. So you might want to consider becoming a patron to support the channel or if you're looking for an internet data connection, then check out my Sakura Mobile affiliate link. That will also help me out. I get a small commission at no extra cost to you, and you get a great product that will help you stay connected in Japan. And if you do get to Sendai and want to suggest some other things to see and do, please comment below. Happy travels, thanks for watching, stay positive, and be a happy gaijin. Bye.